Shalom, shalom, shalom. Be greeted in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, be greeted wherever you're watching me from right now. Uh, welcome to our Sunday live that is happening uh, right now. I believe it's 6 p.m. It's premiered at 6 p.m. Uh, South African time. And uh, wherever you are in the world, uh, be greeted. Um, continue to, 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 to connect with these teachings because they are life-changing. We are doing the series called... We are still in the year of preaching about the gospel um, and we are under the phase that is called the gospel in the scripture. So I hope you are excited and uh, you are ready for this wonderful word of God uh, that is coming to you right now. That is coming to you right now. So just don't forget to continue to like the video and type as much as you can because the more that you type is the more that this teaching gets to reach uh, as many people as it can you see it's very important uh, that many people begin to hear the message of the gospel especially when we, especially even what we are teaching even now where we are um, showing the gospel in the scriptures uh, for those that are watching us for the first time when we talk about the scriptures we are talking about uh, the old testament we are talking about this the tanakh in in hebrew is called the tanakh uh, which is the old testament which comprises of uh, three different sections as I've taught in previous uh, uh, um, uh, videos where it, it, it comprises of uh, the Torah which is the law and and uh, the prophets uh, the Navim the prophets which are all the books of um, uh, what is this all the books from from in fact let me just start this way it comprises of the Torah which are the first five books of Moses Genesis to Exodus and then it comprises of the prophets, which is the books from um, uh, Joshua. Um, uh, Joshua going uh, all the stories, First Kings, Second Kings, and until you know. And then it it also has the writings, which is the Psalms, uh, the Proverbs, and everything. So the Old Testament is what the Bible calls the Scriptures. So when we read in the uh, in in Second Corinthians chapter three. Uh, verse number, I'm not going to open it, uh, verse 16 to 17, the Bible says, All scriptures are the breath of God, and they are given unto us for they are the inspiration of God. They are given unto us for doctrine, for instruction, for rebuke, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And then when we also read the second Peter chapter two, verse 15, the Bible says that study to show thyself approved. He says a minister that does not need to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So we are in this phase where we are showing the gospel in the Old Testament, the gospel in the scriptures. When the Bible says the scriptures, it means it's talking about the Old Testament. Did somebody hear what I'm saying right now? And then the New Testament, like I told you, this when I started this series, I started explaining how the scriptures are the script of God. I told you how the scriptures are the script of God. And um, I actually also uh, 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 let you know that the Gospels now in the New Testament, when I say the Gospels, I'm talking about the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Mark, all the Gospel from Matthew to John. It's now Jesus acting out the script that is in the Old Testament. And then also now we find, uh, even, even the book of Acts is part of it. And then we find, yeah, from Genesis and the book of Acts. And then we find the letters now. The letters now, they are showing us how the Old Testament has been uh, fulfilled. And how the Old Testament now is revealed and showing how the Old Testament now God fulfilled this, what he wrote. And these are the good news of what Jesus has fulfilled in the gospel, what is written in the scriptures. So when the Bible says, study to show thyself, all scriptures are the breath of God. Or study to show thyself, rightly dividing the word of truth. is talking about the scriptures. And we are looking in every, every chapter or oh, let me say every part of the scriptures where we find the gospel, the Holy Spirit is revealing to us. And if you can check, beloved, you'll realize that, uh, you'll realize that, um, um, how can I put this? When the apostles in the New Testament preached the gospel, 
how they read the Old Testament, you'll see that it's different from how uh, you and I have been introduced in the past, how to read the Old Testament. You know, it is different. They are seeing the gospel in the Old Testament. You see how the apostles will quote something in the Old and reveal it in the New. They reveal the gospel in that. And you, you see that this is how the Holy Spirit uh, reveals the Old Testament to them. Remember, even Jesus, I uh, told you last time when he was uh, with his disciples, uh, these are people that have been uh, taught from the young age about the script. They've been recycling the scriptures for a long time. They know the stories of the scriptures for a long time, but they did not understand the scriptures. In fact, Jesus Christ even rebuked the Pharisees. These are the people that have studied. They have their PhDs. They have their, uh, you know, have PhDs. They have they have um, uh, you know they are the they are the keepers of the scriptures and he told them he says you do you err for you not know the scriptures know the power of god in other words even though they have so much of this qualification jesus still says they err because they do not know the scriptures that means they did not know the scriptures because it was not revealed to them in that way even his disciples uh before the lord uh was taken he blew unto them and say receive the holy spirit and we hear that the bible says and he opened their understanding that they may understand the scriptures and the understanding of the scriptures was given unto them that's why when we see when they begin to write the 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 the, 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 the letters now and revealing the gospel you see when they quote the old testament they are not revealing it the way they used to think the old testament was but they are seeing it in the light of the gospel they are it's like they were given some spectacles they were given a particular perspective to see the word of god in light of the gospel they began to see the old testament in light of the gospel and in light of jesus christ they saw the script of god and they use it now in the new testament in in order to preach unto us and this is how god is getting us into and i told you why is it so why is god doing this it is because there is you know the, a lot of religion let me say this a lot of religion are using this bible or the books that are in this bible you find muslims they have some of the similar books that are here in the bible and uh, you find other religion even in ethnic groups uh, several ethnic groups they use the the the, the 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 books that are in this but they don't know what it is that's what jesus said to the pharisees he says you study the scripture thinking that in them you shall receive eternal life he says but these very scriptures they speak about me so that you can come unto me and get eternal life so in other words when you begin to study this, you begin to realize that the scriptures, they speak the gospel. They speak about Jesus Christ. And that is how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to see Christ in it. Because if I read the Bible the same way that the Muslim does, the same way that other religion does that use this book, that means there's no that means i'm doomed because i'm supposed to see the gospel in it and we we began to, we began our gospels uh what's this gospel in the scripture series i have also created a playlist so if you are joining me for the first time you can actually follow the playlist even this will be part of the playlist whereby which uh as you follow the playlist you will begin to you know start from the beginning and understand what we are talking about and begin to 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 to, to grow in it and understand because we started uh, with the gospel, uh, the script of God, uh, the scriptures, the script of God, and we went about to discuss about, um, in fact, you said understanding the scriptures and the script of God. We went after the script of God to the gospel in the Garden of Eden, the gospel of Abel and, 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 and Cain, and we moved from that, and then we went to, um, uh, was it the gospel of Noah after that? The gospel of Abel and Cain? Yeah, I believe it was, oh, the gospel in the 10th generation of men and the gospel of Enoch. And we moved from that one and then we came last last time because we had Friday, we had a guest. We had that program that I told you that we'll be doing regular when we find a guest that will share with us what the gospel means to them. So it will be randomly uh, if I find someone and then they'll share with you. So we, we deal with the gospel uh, of Noah. And I said, why am I calling it the gospel of Noah? Is because I'm revealing the gospel in Noah. You see, I'm revealing the gospel in Enoch, the gospel in the 10th generation of men, the gospel in Adam and Eve, the gospel in, in, in Cain and Abel. And today we are also continuing with another one, which is the gospel in the Tower of Babel, the gospel in the Tower of Babel. And I hope you're ready. It's going to be mind blowing. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I, I cannot wait. Uh, and then after this, next time when we do it, next week when we do it, 
it's going to be the gospel of Abraham. And that one has a lot of things. The Lord told me that there's a lot that we need to cover from Abraham. It's a lot. So I don't know if I'll be able to teach it in one. If he allows me to teach it in one, that means I will try by all means to, to bring everything in the gospel of, 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 of Abraham. So after that, we'll be doing the gospel of Abraham. But today we are doing the gospel of the Tower of Babel. The gospel of the Tower of Babel. Let's pray before we start. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God Almighty, we thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. The adoration is yours. Thank you, Father God, for your amazing love. Thank you for your amazing grace. We glorify you, ancient of days, for there is no one like you. Lord God Almighty, we pray that, Lord, you give me utterance to minister your word as I should not to leave any word that I'm supposed to speak. And Father, I pray that that understanding might be given to us to understand your word. Let everyone that is connected today begin to understand this word. I pray that, Father God, whosoever is here, may their life be transformed by the word and by your spirit. May the ministers of the spirit of God and of angels begin to touch everyone, those that are connected in their house and their homes, May it transform their lives, whatever their needs be. Let this, as I minister the word, you minister to them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that, Lord, they will, they will live this, uh, after this uh, life, their lives will never be the same again. They'll be impacted, they'll be changed, they'll be transformed, they'll be growing, and at the same time, they'll be seeing testimonies, things happening around them. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, as you prove your word, with signs and wonders following. If they are sick in their body, let them be healed. Let them be healed. Let them be transformed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I honor your name, Lord. I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. All right, let's jump into this topic of today. Uh, the gospel in the tower of Babel. The gospel in the tower of Babel. We're going to go... Uh, straight into the word of God right now. We're going to go straight into the word of God right now. The gospel in the Tower of Babel. I want you to, I want you to go to to uh, Genesis chapter eleven. Genesis chapter eleven, uh, verse number one. We're going to read verse number one. Let me open for you now, right here on this on the on the screen, so that you got it right. Um, Genesis chapter eleven. Uh, verse number one the bible says it says now the whole world had one language and one speech okay there's just something i need to just fix a little bit the bible says now um now the the whole earth had one language and one speech and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they were found a plain in the land of Shina, and they dwell there. Verse number three says, And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and break them thoroughly. They had bricks for the stone, and they had asphalt for the mortar. Verse number four. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make the name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Verse number 5. Verse 5, the Bible says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Verse 6. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they have one language. And this is what they began to do. Nothing that which they purpose to do will be withheld from them. Verse 7, the Bible says, Come, let us come down there and confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. <laughs> he says, let us confuse their language, that they may not understand one, one another's speech. Very interesting. Verse 8, he says, So the Lord scattered them abroad, from there over the face of all the earth. And they cease building the city. Say hallelujah. Verse 9. All right. 
the Bible says, therefore, its name is called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the of all the earth. Verse number 10, the Bible says, this is a genealogy of shame. Oh, okay. We're going to end in verse 9. We're going to end in verse 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So now the Bible says, let me just remove this. Now the Bible let us know right now. The Bible says that um, 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 the, the people after the flood of Noah, we will find, first of all, for you to understand what is happening here, I need to take you a bit back. Now, after the flood of Noah, as we've discussed the flood of Noah, that the ark is Christ, right? And we are in the ark. Now, the after the flood finished, Noah comes out with three of his sons. And in chapter 9, uh, in fact, in chapter 9, maybe let me just open it, but Anyway, you're going to read it for yourself. Chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, though 3, the Bible says God began to bless them, like what he did with Adam and Eve. Remember, after God made Adam and Eve, God began to bless Adam and Eve and began to tell them that uh, be fruitful and multiply, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the earth, and all that. So now, after God, after the flood, now when God now was, was, was uh, you know, re re restarting again the earth, with Noah and his sons, he began to, 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 to give them an instruction and not an instruction, he began to bless them like what he did with Adam and Eve and says to them, be fruitful and multiply. In fact, it was, it was an instruction and it was a blessing. He says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and fill the earth. He tells them in chapter nine to say, guys, I want you to fill the earth. Fill the earth, replenish the earth, let the earth be full, let the earth scatter and fill the earth. And then you find uh, now in chapter 11, now these guys now in chapter 11, they found a place. As they are moving, they begin to find a place. As the Bible says it was a plain land uh, and the earth was of one language. The earth was of one, one language and one speech. And the Bible tells us there where we've read that they began to say, okay, uh, let us stay here. They say, let us stay here. Um, let us build ourselves a city and a tower that reached to the sky. You see, reached to the heavens. You see, he said, let us build ourselves a sky that reach into the heavens. In other words, let, let's just build a huge city. He says, let's make a name for ourselves. Lest we scatter around the earth lest we scatter all over the earth and remember what god said to them god said to them uh god said to them um 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 um, um refill the earth he blessed them says be fruitful and multiply and fill the whole earth now they are discussing amongst themselves that we don't need to fill the earth we don't need to go uh you know you know all over the earth let's just stay here and make a name for ourselves right in this place. And the Bible says they began to build the city, and they began to build uh, the the great tower, uh, the great tower, and uh, that reached into the heavens. And they began to do that, and they were doing that, and they were doing it so well. And the Bible says the Lord began to hear, come down to see the city that they have built. And when he saw the city uh, that they have built, uh, the Lord says, uh, you know what? Uh, these people, if they as they they're united as they are, whatever they think or they imagine to do, nothing will stop them to achieve what they want to do. In other words, God says, let's come and confuse their understanding. He says, let us confuse their understanding so that they may not hear each other. In other words, let us, let us confuse their speech. You understand what I'm saying? In fact, when I was reading this from the Tanakh, it says, let us confuse their understanding. And, 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 and in that way, their speech was confused. In other words, they could not understand each other because their speech was confused, because their understanding was confused. What do I mean by that? Yes, their language was, was their language, they were, they, were, they were confused because they were given different languages. Because by giving different languages, it means they have a, a different understanding. In fact, let me just explain what I'm saying right now. Um, because I understood it very well when the Lord was, was letting me, when I was reading it in the, in the Tanakh, I understood it very well what it means. It's because, uh, you know, as I'm traveling, um, we're traveling and preaching the gospel. Uh, there's a, there's another, um, 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 a family of ours in Zimbabwe. I just want to explain in that way. Um, 
in Zimbabwe, they, they also speak a language called Ndebele in Zimbabwe, right? And I know they are watching me now. And they, they are, they, they, the way, when you, when you look at them, there are some words which they mean something. Their understanding means something. And in my native language, which is Zulu, they are, my understanding means what they are saying is different from what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying? In fact, it's the same way as where I am here where they speak Kosa. There are some words which a particular understanding, When, for example, uh, I'll just use the Ndebele one. Um, for those that are not in Africa, it's okay. You'll understand as I'm explaining. I'm trying to make sure that I'm feeding you so that you understand. Now, you know, I'm, 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 I'm explaining more so that you understand. Now, they, they, they will call, they will call um, a lion in, in their language. They will say, I'll just say it for the sake of, of, of understanding. For the sake of elaborating, I'll explain that. They will call the lion, they will say Sluani. You know, um, you know, they will say Sluani. And in Zulu, that word is Sluani. It's actually the whole species of, of animal. The whole species of animal, we call it that way. We say the whole species of animal, we call it that way. But for them, the understanding is that that is a... a, a it's a lion. And our understanding is that that is a lion. And in other words, uh, what God did uh, in the Tower of Babel, it's very clear that he confused their understanding. And in that way, speeches were brought. Speeches were born. You understand what I'm saying? The, 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 that means the, 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 the birth of languages, it's actually uh, the birth of languages is because understanding was confused understanding was split then that gave birth to different language because what they understood to be this i might understand it to be that in fact it becomes even more deeper than that that the languages can be very distant right very distant that someone can understand uh can understand um um, mm, 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 something else to be uh, i'll just make something like a lion you can understand it to be cow cow in his language another one can understand the lion to be to be to be to be to be pubes in zulu that's what they understand it another one can understand the lion to be to be simba in zimbabwe uh, i believe it's zimbabwe or zambia right another one can understand the language to be the the, the, the not the language the the the, the lion to be uh, maybe i'm just making up a name kukaku you know you know the understanding is 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 splitted and it is split in order to produce different languages. You see, so God confused their understanding. That's what He did in the Tower of Babel. He says, He says that let me confuse the understanding. Why? What was the purpose of God confusing the understanding? It's so that they can spread abroad the earth. That was the main reason. Because remember the commandment that He gave them in chapter nine. He says to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. Now, these people, now they come, they want to die in this place. They don't want to fill the earth. They want to end up in one place. And that was not the desire of God for them. The desire of God for them was for them to go out and go out and fill the earth. Can somebody hear what I'm saying right now? That was the that was the that was the commandment of God. That was an instruction of God. So when they decided to say, ah. We have arrived. Let's stay here. Let's make name for ourselves. Let's let's build the city. Let's let's build the tower. And they didn't want to continue with the mission that God has because God had a mission for them. And the mission of God was very clearly that they need to fill the earth. Fill up the earth. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Fill up the earth. I know some people, when they preach this passage, they'll preach that, oh, they wanted to make the name for themselves. So God had a problem with them making the name for themselves. I don't think, I don't think that is the, is the issue because God, God also said to Abraham in chapter 2, I'll make your name great. Now, God is like a father to us. He desires us to achieve great things. But the difference with these people is that, as they arrived in this place, they felt like they've arrived. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? They felt they've arrived. They just said, let's just stay here. Let's just stay here. Let's forget about the mission of God. Let's just forget about what God has, uh, has instructed us to do to fill the earth. Let's just stay here. Let's we scatter abroad. God says, I'll scatter them. You see, the main thing that God did was to confuse their understanding so that he scattered them. 
He says, I will scatter them because they have to continue filling up the what? The earth. The earth has to be full. It's somebody here what I'm saying. You'll understand later as I'm explaining this, what does this symbolize? Right? So after the flood, after the flood, after the flood, and we've explained uh, the ark is Christ and it represents Jesus on the cross. And you remember when Jesus was, 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 was. Uh, a man begin to press him on his side. It represents the door that the Bible says, make a door at the right side. And that's the door by which we enter. That door is not closed. Whosoever believes in Jesus, see him at the cross as his substitute. Whosoever believes enters into that ark, right? So just after the ark, now we meet the Tower of Babel, where people now are supposed to be scattered in order to fill the earth. Because why? They've arrived, they are told they need to fill the earth, but they are supposed to be scattered. What does this symbolize? This symbolizes something very, very interesting, which, which is what we're going to open right now. I want to open it for you. Uh, the book of Luke chapter 24. I want you to realize this. The book of Luke chapter 24. We're going to start in Luke chapter 24. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke 24, um, reading verse 49. Luke chapter 24, reading verse 49. This is after Jesus Christ um, died for us on the cross and he, he rose again and he appeared to his disciples. And this is something that Jesus said. I want you to see this. He says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in Jerusalem, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power on high. Now, now this 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 um, Old Testament uh, this Old Testament uh, picture of the Tower of Babel it comes after the Ark which represents Jesus on the cross. Very interestingly, they reach a place and they stay there. And Jesus tells his disciples, he says, tear in Jerusalem until you are endowed with power. I'm going to get into it, right? Until you are endowed in power. Let's go to the book of Acts now. I want you to see something. Let's go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, uh, Acts chapter number one. Uh, we're going to read verse number four. Also, Acts is a continuation of the book of, um, what do you call this? It's a continuation of the book of, um, of Luke because it's written by the same author. Um, all right. The Bible says, verse four, it says, he says, and being assembled together with them, that's the Lord, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Right? Verse 5, he says, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. My goodness, this is not many days from now. We're going to jump verse 6 and 7 because they ask a certain question. But I want you to focus on something. Verse 8, it says, verse 8, it says, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in all parts of the earth. You see? In all part of the earth. While we are still in the scriptures, let's go to Mark so that you can understand. I want you to see this. After Jesus rose from the dead, this is the commandment that he gave. The Mark 16, verse number 14. Uh, I'm just opening it for you now. He says, Later he appeared to the eleven as they had sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those those who had seen him after he has risen. Remember, he told them that he's going to raise, rise from the dead. And now people are telling them, we see Jesus, we see Jesus. They rebuke them. Now, the first thing that appeared, he rebukes them. Why you did not believe them? Right? Verse 15, he says, And he said to them, Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. My goodness. He said, preach the gospel. This is now he has resurrected. Right? This is now where he has come from the cross, which is the ark right he says he who believes and is baptized will be saved verse 16 but he who does not believe will be condemned now jesus gives them an instruction he says to them go and preach the gospel unto the world right preach it unto the world uh he says he says go into all the world preach the gospel to every creature preach the gospel to every creature 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Now you begin to see now, after Jesus rose from the dead, after Jesus rose from the dead, after he, he paid the, 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 the price in full and the father accepted it, he says to them, all right, guys, dwell in Jerusalem. Dwell in Jerusalem until you are endured with power. Now let's see what happens when they are in Jerusalem because what the Tower of Babel story uh, represent it's a script of something that happens remember the tower of Babel comes after it comes just after with Noah's case it comes just after the Noah uh, the ark and Jesus Christ uh, and the ark which represent Jesus on the cross and now it comes after now they find a place let's stay here let's wait here let's let's build here right and in chapter 9 they are told to to fill the earth and now as they wait there, then now God comes down. You see, now the Bible tells us, Jesus says, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endured with power. He says, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endured with power. There's a promise of my father that I want you to get. So now dwell in what? In Jerusalem until you are endured with power. You begin to see now that, ah, all right, very strangely, uh, we read in the Old, New Testament, Jesus died on the cross. The cross is the representation of, Jesus on the cross is a representation of the ark whereby which we are in as we find Jesus as our substitute. And we begin to also see that after he rose, he says, go into the world and preach the gospel in Mark chapter 6. He says, who would believe and is baptized, he says, will be saved, but whosoever doesn't believe will be condemned. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? He gives them that. And then and then after he gives them that instruction, and then he comes in also in Luke, and then he says, he says uh, okay, which is the same as, let me just explain, which is the same as after they are God now in chapter 9, he says to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. You see, these, these two commandments, what is in the Old Testament and the New, in the New is preach the gospel to all the world. Whosoever believes will be saved. In other words, it is the similar script that is revealed. Does somebody hear what I'm saying? There it was talking about physical birth. But in the New Testament now, when Jesus tells them to preach the gospel, it's talking about spiritual birth because whatever that we preach to and they believe, the Bible says they are born again. That means they are attaining a spiritual birth. Is somebody hear what I'm saying right now? So you see the same, the same thing whereby which is commanded here is the same that is also commanded there. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying right now. Is commanded there. And then you hear later that now, uh, Jesus said, now tarry in Jerusalem until you are endured with power, right? Wait in Jerusalem until you are endured with power. Because there's a part that you need to wait. Why? Because there's a script whereby which after the ark, as they are given the instruction to be fruitful, as they begin to be fruitful, they begin to go into a place and they waited. And when they waited, they began to build things for themselves in that place. I, I, somebody understanding what I'm saying right now. So they wait. And now let's read now in Acts chapter 2 what happens, which shows you that this is similar to what took place in the Tower of Babel, right? Let's go to Acts chapter, Acts chapter 2 now. I'm just going to open it for you quickly. I'm going to open it for you quickly. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, the book of Acts chapter 2, verse number... Um, Mm-hmm. I will start in verse 1. Verse 1. The Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Right? The Bible says in verse 2, it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of the rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were seating. Then there appeared to them divine tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. The Bible said divine tongues as of fire came on them. Tongues. You remember that time they, they received, their understanding was, and they received, new, they received new languages. Tongues is languages. Don't forget that. You see, you see, tongue is languages. It says, they appeared unto them divine tongues of fire. Divine tongues of fire. He said, these ones are divine tongues, divine languages of fire, and set upon them, so that you can understand that tongues is languages. He says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, this is what is also strange now. Verse number five. 
and they dwell in Jerusalem. Uh, it says, and they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devoted men from every nation under the earth. Now, this is what is interesting. Verse 6, it says, and when this sound occurs, the multitude came together and were confused. Oh, they were confused. Why this time they were confused? Remember before in the Tower of Babel, people were confused and they scattered, right? They were confused because everybody, my God, everybody, these divine tongues cause this, heard them speak in his own language. Ah, everybody had them speak in his own language. Verse number 10 says, verse number 7, sorry. Verse number 7 says, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these speak Galilee? Right? Verse 8, he says, And how is it that we hear each, each in our own language, in which we were born? In other words, they're hearing them in the language which we are born. This is the same thing that happened at Tower of Babel, where they were speaking one language, but their language was scattered. Their understanding and languages were scattered. They could not now understand each other. Uh, is somebody hear what I'm saying right now? Hear their languages in which we were born. Say hallelujah. Let me just stop here because of time. Now they hear us in the languages that were born. And, 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 and what happened now? Oh, let me just, oh, let me just bring myself. Today I'm, I'm monitoring while I am preparing the life. So now, now, now I want you to see this. Now they, they had them in their, all of them in their languages, all languages as they are gathered. This is the same picture as the Tower of Babel. In the Tower of Babel, they decided to stay in that place because the script must be fulfilled. The, 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 the disciples had to wait in Jerusalem. <laughs> this is too much. They waited in Jerusalem. And when they waited, God came down by his spirit. And the Bible said tongues were given unto them. And they began to speak in other tongues. And people knew that these are Galileans. They speak Arabic. These are the people that are speaking Arabs. They are speaking in Hebrew. These are the people. But now everyone had them in Rome. In, in, in the Rome language, Italy. They had them speaking in different languages. Everyone began to hear them because of the divine language that was given unto them. And all of them began to hear them in that language. What is this? Is this a coincidence? No. It was a script that was written in the Tower of Babel. And guess what happened? After they received, in the Tower of Babel, after their languages were splitted, the Bible tells us that they began to spread abroad. What happens to the disciples? He says, he says, he says, go and preach the gospel, baptize them into the, all the earth. He says, but to wait in Jerusalem until you are endured with power. Then you, you become my witnesses unto Jerusalem, unto Samaria, and unto all the part of the earth. When that experience happened, that they began to, 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 to speak in all these languages, what happened exactly is that after that encounter, they went and preached the gospel. It's somebody hear what I'm saying. Right now. They went and preached the gospel. They started with those that are there. They started with those that are there because it is a script. In fact, the Lord began to show me something which was very, very powerful. He began to say to me, you know, the experience of the Tower of Babel, it's something that happens. It's something that still happens in the church because the Tower of Babel is a script whenever people are given a mission and then they don't do the mission. The Tower of Babel experience happened. Let me explain what I'm trying to say right now. Say hallelujah. So what happened to the disciples after they received the Holy Spirit, they began to preach the gospel. And they also now created another Tower of Babel. Because what they did is that they decided to stay in Jerusalem for some time. After the Lord told them, after you receive the Holy Spirit, after now you receive the language because we have fulfilled the Tower of Babel, the script of the Tower of Babel. Now you need to go around the world. And proclaim the gospel, proclaim the good news to everybody because I scattered them at the Tower of Babel so that I can unite them in the gospel. Once after I've scattered them so that they feel the earth, then I unite them in the gospel after I've died for them. 
It's somebody here what I'm saying. Now go. Now what did the disciples do? Now the Bible, we will be reading the book of Acts. Now the disciples, they one, they were one mind. They were praying together, breaking bread every day. And we, 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 we you know, the, 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 obviously the Bible says there must, there must be weaknesses in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in all parts of the earth. But now they started in Jerusalem very well. And they did that very well. But they, they decided to stay in Jerusalem. And what happened? The Tower of Babel experience happened, but not in the Holy Ghost now. The same way as before. Now, persecution began to broke out. And when persecution began to broke out, they scattered now. They went to Samaria now. They went to, that's where now Paul, they travel into Philippine. They travel into different places of the world. And they began to preach the gospel all over the world. It's because why something happened. And we see that experience as well. The Tower of Babel experience also begins to happen. When, um, when, when Paul and Barnabas were enjoying themselves in ministry, doing something together in a particular place, and they, they were supposed to spread, Paul is supposed to continue with the Gentiles, and then all that, and they, they were enjoying themselves in that, and God brought again the, 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 the Tower of Babel experience. They had a different in understanding, a dispute. And what did they happen? They scattered. And when they scattered, Paul went on the other side and preached the gospel. And Barnabas went on the other side and also preached the gospel. So the Tower of Babel, it's an experience that always happens when people forget the mission. Because what is the mission? The mission is to spread the gospel. In fact, let me tell you this. The Lord told me something. He says, you see, this is more than a mission. This is a commandment. You see, um, hmm, uh, God help me. If there's a commandment that we were given um, in the New Testament, I know that uh, John also speaks about loving one another, which is so powerful, which is so powerful. But let me tell you, there's a commandment that we're going to account for, which is more deep, which is going to account for. It's the commandment of preaching the gospel, witnessing to somebody. I, I, know, I, know, I know we call it the Great Commission. It's more than a commission. It's a commandment, like what, like how it was a commandment for Adam to be fruitful. How it was a commandment for Noah, these people in the Tower of Babel, they were told to fill the earth. This is how it's a commandment for us to tell somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a commandment. It's a commandment. It's not a commission that you can feel like doing it or not. It's a commandment that you spread the message of God. It's a commandment to tell somebody about Jesus. Because why is the commandment that we are given in the New Testament? I'm of that belief that this is the commandment that we are given in the New Testament. And all the parables of Jesus reveal it so. That this is the commandment that we're going to account for. All the parables of Jesus, we'll read them when we start reading the, the gospel. I'll teach you how to read the gospels as well. All the commandment of Jesus revealed to us that these are the, the commandment of the New Testament. Like Adam and Eve, they were not given much of the commandment, except I think there were two. First of all, be fruitful and multiply. Number two, don't partake of that tree. Are you somebody understanding what I'm saying right now? So this is the commandment that we are also given. We are given this commandment. We are given this commandment. Be exact exact commandment be fruitful is the same go, go unto the world preach the gospel go all over the world tell them about jesus in other words jesus is going to ask us why is it so that this is a commandment because jesus died for everybody he wants everybody to be born again as they they feel the earth in the physical they, they has they have to feel the earth in the same in, in the spiritual in the spiritual being born again of the spirit of god are you hearing what I'm saying? Because why? Jesus has died for all of them. He does not want any of them to go through uh, the judgment of God because he has become, he has become the pen, he has taken the penalty of every man's judgment to himself. He has already went through the judgment of every man so that they don't go through it. That's why he commanded us a very simple, I believe this is a very simple commandment of a new creation. Tell somebody about the good news. Tell somebody about the good news. That is the commandment that you are given. And you must be very serious about it. As much as you know in the church, we focus on many things which already they are fulfilled. Instead of focusing on what is on the table. What is on the table now is that we need to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth spiritually. We need to let 
everybody know about Jesus so that they don't end up in the wrong place. We need to get everybody born again so that they don't end up in the wrong place. To share the message of good news with somebody is, 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 is actually fulfilling the commandment of the believer. This is the commandment of the believer. If there's anything, what does God wants me to do? This is what he wants you to do. This is the commandment of the believer. Yes, but, but, but God wants me, let me do this, let me do this to impress God. No, God wants you to share the message with somebody. After that, you are saved. The Bible says, for by grace we've been saved. It is not of ourselves. Why do you want to come back to ourselves? It is not of ourselves, but it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not about us, but it's about what he has done. So when he has fulfilled what he has done, now he commands us, go into the world, preach the gospel, fill the earth with spiritual beings in Christ. Let the whole world be saved. In other words, this is the commandment that you are given. You want to impress God? You want to do something for This is what you are supposed to do now. This is the commandment. Like the commandment that he gave. It's a simple commandment. When my eyes began to open, I realized, oh my God, this is, mo- is this not just a commission. This is a commandment. We have this commandment as a new creation. Yes, everything that a man has done wrong, breaking the law, Jesus has already went for penalty for that. Now he's giving us a new commandment. The same as what he gave them uh, in the book of Noah. After they're in the ark, he says, we replenish and do all this. You see, this is before Moses came with the law. This is what he told them. He says, do all this. And all of a sudden, when now, you know, they begin to say, ah, let us stay in this place. He scattered them because the mission is to is to preach. The mission is to tell somebody. It's not to stay in one place. The mission is to go and spread the message. So each and every time people think they have arrived, that's when God will scatter them. Because if he scatters you, the reason for scattering is for the fulfill, is for the gospel to reach more people. It's for you to know that you are supposed to be fruitful and multiply, multiply spiritually to everyone. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. It is a commandment, beloved. It is not, it is more than, it is more than a, uh, what do you call this? It is more than a, um, 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 what do you call this thing? It is more than a commission. As if I choose to obtain a commission or not. No, it's a commandment. It's a commandment. That's why sometimes you find there'll be confusion in your life. Or there'll be confusion in certain states. Because it's either you are not doing the commission and God is causing confusion so that you can do the commission. Or it's either you have, I think you have arrived when you have not yet arrived and God wants you to go and preach the gospel somewhere. Then he causes the confusion. Because why? The commission of Jesus Christ is for us to go and tell the whole world. The whole world. We need to re- replenish the earth, spiritual Christians all around the world. Christ believing. Because why? It is of importance that everybody gets saved. Because this, if they don't get saved, the Bible says, He that believes and is baptized is saved. It says, but he that does not believe, this says, is condemned. And how can they be condemned when the substitute has already happened? You see why this commandment is a serious commandment? Because he, he, the substitute has already happened for men. They cannot go and suffer the same faith. No, a thousand times no. No, a thousand times no. The same faith for, 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 for breaking the law of God. The same faith where somebody has already taken their penalty for breaking the law of God. He said, no, go and tell them the good news. That's the commandment that we are given. And we need to understand the seriousness of it. That's the gospel of the Tower of Babel. They receive the Holy Ghost. They have to go. They receive languages. They had to go and preach. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so, so I'm not saying that we all need to be preachers, no. What I'm saying is that, but we all need to be witnesses, definitely. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are his witness. That means you can share with somebody the good news. You can share with your friends the good news. You can share with somebody good news. Because this is the commandment that God has given us. Have you, have you understand that people can be so happy to believe that they are keeping the law? Uh, even though they are not, because the law, you have to keep everything. If, if you have to understand, the law is more than the Ten Commandments, it's everything. They have to keep everything. 
that is written. And they have so much confidence that they are keeping it. But when it comes to telling someone about Jesus, they are afraid. Why? It's because that's the true commandment. This is the real commandment. The real commandment of the believer right now is to tell somebody about Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? It's so important to tell someone. Because why? God has already fulfilled Jesus in Christ. God fulfilled for us every demand and requirement of righteousness in the gospel. Now let's fill up the earth with spiritual beings that are believing in Jesus Christ. Let's fill up. Let's multiply. Let's duplicate. Let people be saved and believe so that they are saved from the, from the penalty which is coming to all those that don't believe in Jesus Christ because that's the only way out. The penalty that is coming to all men, you right? Because Jesus took their place so that they don't go through that penalty. This is a simple message. This is something that we need to share. This is something that we need to tell everybody about. This is something that we need to let everybody know about Jesus Christ because it is an amazing use. It is amazing news. It is amazing news. Go. Let me just open it for us again. Let me just open it for us again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me just open it for us again. The book of Acts chapter 16. The book of Acts chapter 16. Verse number. Um, sorry, not Acts. What did I say? Acts. Mark chapter 16, sorry. Mark chapter 16, verse number 14. Mark 16, verse 14. Let's go first 15. This is the commandment. And he said to them, go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature, verse 16. And he who believe and is baptized will be saved. But he that does not believe will be condemned. So as you are seeing, this is what the Tower of Babel represents, the gospel in the Tower of Babel. They receive languages. When we receive the Holy Ghost, they tear it in a place, building a tower for themselves. The Bible says they were in the upper room. They were praying in one accord and the Holy Spirit came down. God came down, confused their languages. The Holy Spirit comes down, gave them tongues and everybody around them began to hear them in their languages. And then they went about preaching, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem. So in other words, the Holy Spirit comes so that I am his witness. He comes that I may be his witness so that why I may fulfill what God has, 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 has instructed to know what to fulfill, spread and fill the earth. We are fulfilled. Go and preach the gospel. Fill the earth with Christians. Fill the earth with believers. Believers nation. Fill the earth with believers all around the world. I don't know if somebody is understanding what I'm saying right now. Fill the earth with believers. Makusata, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for revealing the gospel in the Tower of Babel and opening our eyes to realize the commandment you have given us is to witness to somebody the good news. We give you all the praise, Lord, that, Lord, we are not comfortable staying in one place, staying in our comfort zone, Staying in our comfort houses, staying in our comfort areas without witnessing to our neighbors. But Father, we might spread abroad and feel the whole place because this is the commandment. That's why people are a bit afraid to go and speak. It's because it is the commandment of God that is heavenly attacked. The enemy can be so happy to see believers trying to fulfill things that you have already fulfilled for us. But not to do this one. Father, pray. Father, I pray that, Lord, each and every believer that is hearing me right now, that, Lord, we might be fired up to go and witness the good news, to spread, to spread, because this we are fulfilling the commandment of being fruitful and multiply. We are spreading in the name of Jesus, witnessing to everyone so the spiritual believers might be born all around the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for them in Jesus' name that you empower them to do it. You empower them to do it in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I give you all the praise, Lord. I give you all the glory in the name of Jesus, for there's no one like you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. I hope you have gotten that message and your life has been transformed because once you begin to understand this gospel, you begin to understand seeing the gospel in the scriptures, you begin to realize the instructions, that the instruction they were given is the instruction that they did not want to do and God had to confuse them so that they can do it. And we are given the similar instruction spiritually to spread abroad, spiritually to cause all men to be saved because why? It is of agency that people should be saved. Love you so much. Love you so much. And if you understand the agency, you'll understand how important. If you understand the gospel, the way I teach you, you'll understand how is it agent that people have to be saved. Because now, by grace, we've been saved. It is not of ourselves, but it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So if it's a gift, let's give it to everybody. Let this gift be spread to everybody. That is the commandment that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us. And if you study the parables of Jesus, you will see that the parable concerning the end times and the believers, they are actually connected to this commandment. They are all connected. I'll show you when we do that. They are all commanded. They are all connected to this commandment because this is the commandment that we are given. Love you so much. God bless you. Love you and have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead of you. May God bless you, cause you to be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Love you so much. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And uh, and God bless you. If you, I see someone who is, is, is wants healing, I pray for divine healing in Jesus' name, divine health all over your body in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, you are healed in Jesus' name. Love you so much. See you again on um, on Friday and also on Sunday as we continue in our journey uh, of the gospel in scriptures. Love you and God bless you. And shalom, 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 shalom.